Now the real pain begins, Danny boy. You know, you brought up a really good point, like, um, you know, people really thinking of Karate Kid 3 as sort of a rehash of the first one. And, you know, this is something that I think all of us who've enjoyed Karate Kid 3 have kind of dealt with. There's there's always been this sort of critical backlash. Like at the time, it wasn't really that warmly received by by critics. Um, and I think that's just been kind of permeating the thought you know, the general think about this movie for a long time. And um, I was wondering if I could get your guys' thoughts. You started off actually looking at movies that maybe weren't well received. And so, uh, and in your podcast, you talk about the idea of like there being like a good, good movie, a good, bad movie, and a bad, bad movie. And that you think that Karate Kid 3 is actually a good, good movie. And so I was wondering if we could talk about that, like the the critical assessment, like what do people generally think of Karate Kid 3 and is it fair? Like for instance, uh, Siskel and Ebert. That Thomas Ian Griffith nearly saves the movie. He's a terrific villain, but I had a problem this time with Ralph Macchio's lead character of Daniel. Macchio plays him so relentlessly upbeat that the character loses the credibility of the first film. Pat Morita is fine, but then Macchio's girlfriend seems like a dunce. For everything that I liked about this picture, there was something I didn't like. Again, it's not a bad film, just not special enough for me to recommend. Well, of course, the original Karate Kid was an excellent picture. I think so. Very entertaining, very intelligent. However, I've seen it, and I don't mm. need to see it again. I don't need to see it a third time. There is nothing in this movie that is fresh or original. Except the villain. Part You'll three. acknowledge that. Oh, well, they have a new villain. They bring in I thought that villain. guy was but pretty scary. But they also had the same old villain, that guy yeah. that keeps running the bankrupt karate studio. Ebert hated it. He gave it one and a half stars. Uh, you know, Gene Siskel <laughs> liked it a little bit more and praised Terry Silver. Um, you know, but like, so what do you guys think of, of that, of its of its reputation? I, I think, uh, I think you know, just generally speaking, I think it gets a bad rap. And I hate the retroactive, like, even Ralph Macchio trying to apologize for it now, it really bothers me. Like, just own it because it's a good movie. They don't make movies like 1989 anymore. And to be honest, yeah, I guess, you know, Gene Siskel and, and, and Ebert, they didn't really like it. But I don't know. I, I look at, you know, we talked, you mentioned a good, bad movie, good, good movie and, and that kind of movie. I'm the type of movie watcher that I'm just entertained by the art of making movies and just the skill. Like in this movie, whether the movie plot was good or not, I could sit here and say Thomas Ian Griffith entertained me the whole time. And that to me is a success, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and, and even Macchio and the rest of the actors were good. I think one of the reviewers called Macchio whiny and he was, you know, I forgot how they, they mentioned it, but I just think it's it's a little disingenuous to sit there and just bash this type of movie. I think there's some good qualities of it. And even if it is a rehash of the first one, from my perspective, it did what it needed to and it did it well. And maybe I guess at the time it was the third and we called like we did a thing on our show. We talked about the third of a trilogy. And is that get bad rap just because people are tired of it? And and I know, Badway, I know you, you feel probably similar to me, but I, I'm curious if you if what your thoughts are. Yeah. Um, you know, all due respect to Ralph Macchio. I mean, I'm, at the time he was, what was he? 28 years old, 27, 20 years old making this movie. I feel like maybe, yeah, maybe he is embarrassed by it, but maybe it's for different reasons than all oh, the movie was bad. Maybe, you know, where was he in his life at that point? He's still playing a teenager as a 28 year old. Maybe he had internal feelings about that at the time. So it might not just be about the movie. It could be personal for him as well. Um, as far as like the critics go, I feel like back then, before the internet age, you would people would take critics' um, feelings about movies into more stronger consideration, just because it was kind of their only way to say, "Oh, is this movie worth my five dollars, or is this worth my six dollars?" We we look at Siskel and Ebert in the '90s and the '80s and and, and, uh, and so on, and uh, we read the newspaper clippings of the reviews. Now we see a movie um, two days before the movie's out. There's a thousand <laughs> reviews on YouTube that you can click on. And you have uh, reviewers that are pretty much curated to your tastes. So if you trust this person, you know this person likes the X, Y, and Z movie, then you're going to value their opinion more rather than a coverall of Siskel and Ebert. So when, when guys like that, um, who are very good at their jobs, I mean, I'm not bashing Siskel and Ebert, but uh, when they say a movie is not worth your time, it will it will greatly af negatively affect yeah. your box office. So, I mean, that tanked, that tanked the money, I think, for the movie. Um but as far as the third of the trilogy goes, it has to be bigger 
bigger, badder, stronger because to to to, uh, to gain the attention. One was the original. Two was the addition to the story. You know, they went to Japan. Um, it was a little slower, but also a little more nuanced. The third, you have to blow it out. It's it's kind of like I like it to. You know, they say, oh, you know, in a, in the horror movie or in Rambo, the bigger body count. The third movie has to have a bigger body count. Terry Silver is the bigger <laughs> body count of, of the trilogy. So I I think it was written as well as it could be. Maybe, you know, after two, I don't know if there was a need for three, but I'm glad there was. I believe it is a good movie. It's not a it's not a good, bad movie. It is a good, good movie. Sure, there's flaws to it, but I think the the addition of silver alone pushed it forward with such a unique and powerful character to add on to LaRusso's, uh, you know, final chapter with Miyagi. I think it was, I think it was as good as could possibly. Could I, have, I think another thing that I would say too, to you, you asked earlier, Ken, like the criticism of it, I think, I think it's a little disingenuous to just, we said it earlier to just call Terry silver, this like just comic book villain, you know, because, and there's a quote, I'll read it because I wrote it down from one of the reviews that you sent me, but it said, Terry the villain is one of those slick back wise guys with a squirmy smile who does hateful things because he's a hateful person. Karate is his hobby. His real life business is dumping toxic waste. And I think that sort of belittles the character. And I don't know if maybe the the, the aging and the time of passing in this movie, but to me, I sort of like somebody with a mysterious backstory. I kind of want to speculate on what about him made him that way. And obviously mm-hmm. Cobra Kai has flushed out his backstory with the Vietnam flashbacks, which I thought were really well done. I got to give the show's creators like a really, really good props or really high props for that because I've, I think it really built his character out. But even when this movie came out, I think like, I don't know, maybe they were just checking the box. It's almost like uh, you mentioned the critics and, and how it might tank something. It's almost like a food critic. You get the food critic at your restaurant, and if the, the the acclaimed food critic says you have bad food, you know, at least in shows and stuff, they always make it like, oh, it's going to tank our restaurant. I think if Siskel and Eber hate your movie, at that time, there wasn't a bevy of people who could sit there and say, hey, you know what? Bad Way is my my person. If, he, if I like his taste in movies, I'm going to like this movie, which you can do now. And I think that's what's so cool about something like a Rotten Tomatoes or something else. You can find the people in the aggregators that sort of go along with you. And and if you if you listen to our show or, or just listen to shows like ours, we love these kind of movies. So if we like this, we're probably going to like the Seagal movies, the Schwarzenegger movies, mm-hmm. the ridiculous over the top stuff. It's just what's in our wheelhouse, and it, it it it's entertaining to us. And I, I feel a little frustrated that people just look at it as, oh, this is movie is a piece of junk because it just rehashed the first plot. I think that belittles it. And it's, it's right. unfair to the movie, I think, personally. Right. And, uh, you know, I, I, I totally agree with you. And I, I think, you know, like with Ralph Macchio, obviously, you know, we're looking at some articles where, you know, he's kind of down on Karate Kid 3. He doesn't like that movie at all. Um, and I know John Alvidson and other people um, have kind of said it was not a good movie. And, um, you know, I think Badway was saying, you know, this might be also related to like maybe the environment and how, when, how the movie was made. Um, and I think that was the case with this one. I think they wanted to do, you know, one direction, almost like a historical type movie of uh, Miyagi's family. But then the studio said no. So they had to go back to sort of more the formula. And maybe they didn't want to do that. And then when they did that, I know that Martin Cove was going to be the main bad guy, but he had to back out like something like three weeks before the start of shooting. And they created the character of Terry Silver. And so maybe it was the the uh making of the movie itself left a bad taste like it wasn't that it wasn't a great experience maybe for the people who made it and then i'm wondering if the movie then came out and critics didn't like it that kind of reinforced that bad thought and um but the the what sucks for me i think as a fan is even the studio seems to take that um, yeah. kind of approach and sony home entertainment i'm really looking forward to your 4k release but it's been the same story every like blu-ray dvd release or whatever is if karate kid 3 is part of the set at all they just put up the movie there are just no Mm -hmm. special features no commentaries um i'd love to hear from uh uh, you know the creators of of the movie and uh hear about the behind the scenes story and um but we never get any of that it's like they they take the movie and kind of put it in the corner with a dunce cap you know they they do you think this is going to change like with with 
like, with the new season coming out, do you think people who maybe didn't discover it will go back and 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 like it now and appreciate it? Because it's almost like Machio and some of these folks are are trying to distance themselves from it now, which doesn't make sense to me because nobody's talking about box office performance for it in 2021 here. Nobody's talking about Siskel and Ebert's score. Like, truthfully, I mean, we're talking about it, but they're not sitting there saying, well, Ebert gave it a, you know, 1.5, and and that's why you shouldn't watch it now. I'm just, I'm hoping that the new, the way that the new show came out, I'm hoping that people can go back and really look at this with a fresh lens and appreciate it for what it is. And and I hope maybe it's your point, maybe they will do a re-release or maybe people will get this appreciation because Thomas Heath Griffith is a great actor and I don't yeah. think he gets the respect for what this was. And I know I've said that a few times, but I really mean it. Like he has done a great job in this and I wish he was, I wish he had more, even more movies under his belt because of what he did with this movie. He did a great performance. I mean, Daniel Day-Lewis, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to go there again. <laughs> I'm going to go there again. <laughs> yeah. And, and I agree with you. And I'm just going to call it right now with you guys. I've said this before. I'm going to say it again. I think Thomas Ian Griffith already could be in line for an Emmy nomination. I hope he does. He deserves I, it. I hope so. Yeah. He deserves so. it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Bad way. What do you think? Could do you think the Cobra Kai could um, with Terry coming into Cobra Kai could this cause a reevaluation of Karate Kid Three? Yeah, I certainly hope so. And but um, I what Drew said was interesting about how they're all they were pre distancing themselves. Um, I, I yeah, I really wish they would have gone the opposite way and just kind of embraced it as part of the story. Um, I and I agree with your assessment of like you know DVD releases coming out and not having not having anything about it behind the scenes. Why not embrace it? Whether you, th- whether you're you thought it was a good movie or a bad movie, as the makers, I mean, there are still interesting stories to tell about it. So I, I, and and with those stories, people might come to appreciate it even more, especially the people maybe didn't come around to it the first time. But I, I certainly hope that they they write the silver character, and I know, I know Thomas E. Griffith has the um, the performance in him that he will make people go back and watch. Maybe the people that were turned off. And never checked it out or, or watched it once and, and, and maybe written it off in their minds. I saw it 25 years ago and I'm, I'm good. I'm done with it. Maybe hopefully it, it can re, re- reevaluate for them. Yeah.